You're listening to Simple Health Radio, the podcast about recognizing medical emergencies and promoting wellness. Your host is Dr. Amron, an experienced ER physician who has treated thousands of people just like you. Information on the show is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Always talk to your doctor or go to the nearest emergency room with any questions you may have. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Simple Health Radio. We received a great question recently from one of the podcast hosts that's in our network. The show is called Doc and the Deacon, and this is an amazing podcast. It's hosted by a family medicine physician and a member of the clergy, so that's why you have a doc and a deacon on the show. And they talk about a lot of different medical topics, including life issues, and they try to bring in their perspectives from their own specialty, along with some humor. So you should definitely give it a listen. You can visit their website, which is docandthedeacon.com. So let's take a listen to the question that the deacon sent to us recently. Hey, this is the deacon from Doc and the Deacon. I got a question for Simple Health Radio. The doc won't give me any weight loss medicine. Can you walk me through what weight loss meds are out there and what I can help have him recommend for me? Don't forget to listen to Doc and the Deacon on Apple Podcasts or check out our website at docandthedeacon.com. First, let me thank the deacon for sending in an amazing question. Obesity is a very delicate subject, and oftentimes it's hard to talk about it openly, even with your family or your doctor. So I appreciate that you recorded this question so that we could answer it on today's show. Now, medically speaking, obesity isn't simply a cosmetic issue. It's not really just about the appearance of the person. Really, this is a chronic medical disease. And obesity is related to a lot of other very bad things, including diabetes, high blood pressure, heart problems, stroke, gallstones, and cancer. So we do know that obesity affects not just the way a person looks, but all of the metabolic effects, all of the other internal organs are affected by obesity as well. We do know that people who try to lose weight, if they're doing all the right things, eating the right foods, exercising, a majority of them actually regain the weight within five years. And this has been proven in multiple studies. It's in a lot of the statistics. So people feel really good when they lose weight. They take care of all the things they're supposed to do. But a few years later, unfortunately, they relapse. And all of that weight comes back, plus even a little bit more. So we have to define exactly what obesity means. Because obesity is an epidemic in the United States. Now, two-thirds of adults are already considered overweight, and an additional one-third of Americans are considered obese. So being overweight and being obese are actually two different things. And these are based on calculations called the BMI. So obesity, if we define that, is based on the BMI. The BMI is actually calculated by taking your body weight in kilograms, and then you divide it by your height in meters squared. So I know it sounds like a physics formula, but First, you have to start with your weight, so convert it from pounds into kilograms, and then take your height, so convert your feet and inches into meters, and then plug it into the formula. When a BMI is calculated between 25 and 29, that's considered overweight. So people should really be 24 or below to be considered normal weight. So between 25 and 29 is overweight. Any BMI over 30 is considered obesity. Okay, so that's an important distinction to know it in there. There's a lot of websites that have the BMI calculators, and you can download charts. It's very easy to follow. You just circle your height, circle your weight, and then it'll tell you exactly where you fall. Now, the tricky part with obesity is that because it affects so many other parts of the body, including the internal organs, circulation, thyroid, all of these things are related, the medications that are used to treat it are also targeted for certain organs in the body. Now, the reason that the doc didn't want to prescribe you any medication initially is because there are side effects to a lot of the treatments. So every single guideline that we have, all the textbooks, all the medical literature, all the associations, they tell us three things. So the first thing is we have to change the lifestyle. So we need to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So first we look at your lifestyle considerations and modify those. The second thing is we look at your calorie intake. So whatever you're eating in a day, you have to keep a food diary, see exactly how many calories you're putting in, and then see how many calories you really need. Because if your calories in is excessive, then you're not going to be able to use that properly. And that converts directly into fat, which is going to convert into obesity. And then the last thing is physical activity. So all people, regardless of their BMI, 
need to have some type of daily activities. People with higher BMIs need more physical activities. So again, before we ever talk about medication, we have to look at those three things. What's your lifestyle? What's your calorie requirement? And what's your physical activity? Now, if you've modified all those things, you've optimized them to the best of your ability, and you're not able to get weight loss, or if you have other health issues like diabetes or heart problems, then we definitely need to look at medications. And that's what we're going to talk about in this section here. Now, there are over-the-counter medications, and there are prescription medications. The tricky part is that most over-the-counter medications are fraudulent. They are not FDA-approved, they have never been proven to work, and they actually have a high risk of side effects. So anything that promises you a certain amount of weight loss or tells you this is the secret ingredient to weight loss for you, I really don't believe it. And a lot of those medications that are sold over the counter are just herbal supplements. They may have some ingredients that in research would possibly help, but in practicality, in real life, they simply don't. The downside is that a lot of herbal medications are mixed with other chemicals. And a lot of them are actually diuretics, meaning they help you to lose weight by taking water out of your body and converting it to urine. So yes, it is possible to lose 10 pounds, but if all of that is water weight and you're not able to compensate, that can actually make you very, very sick. Now, other diet medications are actually laxatives. So when you take them, it stimulates you to go to the bathroom, you have bowel movements frequently, and that causes you to lose weight as well. So you have to keep that in mind. Over-the-counter products, including herbals, they promise many things, but they're probably not advisable for most people, and the FDA does not regulate any of them. Now, there is one exception. So there is a medication called Orlistat. Orlistat, over-the-counter, is called Ali, spelled A-L-L-I. And the brand name, prescription, is called Xenical, which is spelled X-E-N-I-C-A-L. So this is kind of a unique formula, because it is over-the-counter, but then there's a prescription formulation as well. So with the Orlistat, this particular medication blocks a particular enzyme, which is called lipase. So lipase is produced in the body, specifically in the pancreas and the gallbladder, and it breaks down fat. So for example, if you eat a cheeseburger, the lipase will be activated and it converts the cheeseburger, meaning the cheese, the meat, and the bread, and so forth, into smaller components, which are then able to be absorbed in the intestine. The Orlistat blocks lipase. So it never allows the fat to be broken down into smaller pieces, which means it's never absorbed into the blood. So basically you can eat a cheeseburger and you won't get the fat in your blood. And that sounds like a great solution. The problem is, where does it go? Because if you're not absorbing it into your body, then it's going to continue down your small intestine, into the large intestine, and out. So basically it is a type of laxative because it's allowing the stimulation of the intestine to remove that in the stool. So Orlistat does work, and it blocks about 25% or more of the fat that people consume. So if you eat a donut, if you eat cake, and you take the Orlistat, it is true. It will block lipase, which in turn will block the fat absorption, which in turn will prevent the fat from building up in your body. The problem is that if you take too much of this and you combine it with too much fat, you will have diarrhea, and it causes bloating. It can cause a lot of flatulence and gas and it causes a lot of other symptoms that are unpleasant. So you have to use it very carefully. This is not something you want to use at a wedding, or if you go camping, or if you're on a flight. This is really something you can do only in the comfort of your own home, but still, you need to avoid fat, because that's the whole idea. Now, we'll talk about prescription medications, because there are several, and they do work in different ways. Hey everybody, this is Ricky, the Jolly Rancher Commander from Geeked Up Radio, where we discuss comic book movies, video games, and the cringiest news we can find on the internet. Find Geeked Up Radio on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or most anywhere you get your podcast from. So the first one we'll talk about is going to be a diuretic. So the diuretic is called Lasix. The other name is called Ferrosamide. This is a very strong diuretic, meaning it works on the kidneys and it takes fluid, anything that's been retained in your body, converts it through the kidneys into urine. So there are many people who retain a large amount of fluid. For different reasons, it pools in their ankles and their legs, sometimes in their hands or their face. So people who take Lasix, they get rid of that excess fluid. They can lose five pounds in a couple of days, but that's all water weight. Now, if somebody has, for example, heart disease, removing excess fluid is beneficial because it improves their blood circulation, it improves the functioning of their heart pumping and all the muscles that go with it, and they've lost weight, so they actually breathe better. So for those people, Lasix is a very good option. 
However, if you don't retain fluid, if you don't have swelling in your ankles or your face due to fluid retention, don't take Lasix because it will cause issues with your sodium and your potassium, and that can make you very, very ill. Now, the second medication is also a diuretic. This one is called HCTZ. The full name is called hydrochlorothiazide. So this is a thiazide diuretic. Now, HCTZ is actually a low-dose blood pressure medication. So remember, we talked about obesity directly causes hypertension. So if you have high blood pressure and you have some issues with fluid retention, your doctor may recommend this medication first. So if you're able to get rid of that extra fluid and you're able to lower your blood pressure, that's two very good things from one treatment. So Lasix is the first one. HCTZ is the second one. And then we're going to talk about several categories of true obesity medications. So the first one is called Belvic, B-E-L-V-I-Q. This medication works on serotonin receptors, and it helps to reduce appetite. So Belvic is only by prescription, and serotonin is a chemical in the brain. So it's used for different types of mood uh, fluctuations, but it also helps us with our digestion or the way that we eat and the way that we metabolize. So when people take Belvic, it suppresses their appetite, and they have to use it for a period of time to get the benefit, but it does work. So Belvic is one option that can be prescribed by your physician if your insurance company will pay for it, because it is brand name only and is very expensive. The second medication is a combination. So this one is called Contrave, C-O-N-T-R-A-V-E, Contrave. This is a combination of bupropion plus naltrexone. So bupropion is an antidepressant. It's found in a medication called Wellbutrin, and there are millions of people who use Wellbutrin for different reasons. That's an antidepressant. What about naltrexone? Well, naltrexone is an opioid antagonist. What that means is that people who have a history of opioid abuse, if we're trying to get them off that medication, or if we're trying to help them with their addiction, we'll use naltrexone. So the drug manufacturers combined an antidepressant with a medication for addiction, and that's how we have Contrave. So this medication is very effective for food addiction. So food addiction behaviors include people who just eat constantly, even when they're not hungry, and it causes weight gain, it causes all kinds of other issues with their metabolism. So the idea is that if you break one portion of their food behavior cycle, then the weight loss will occur more naturally. And many people who are obese also have some type of depression. So even though this is not marketed as an antidepressant, the active ingredient, bupropion, is an antidepressant. Okay? So we have Contrave, we have Belvique. Now the next one is called Phentermine. Phentermine has many names. One of the brand names is called Adipex P. Now Phentermine is a stimulant, and it's been around for decades. The way that Phentermine works is to increase the heart rate, and it stimulates metabolism. Now if you remember, about 15 or 20 years ago, there was a medication called Fenfen. Fenfen was available. It was marketed as a weight loss medication. Millions of people used it. Unfortunately, some people died, and it was due to issues with the heart valves. So Fenfen was pulled off the market. But Phentermine is now back as a prescription medication. It does work. It does work as a stimulant to help with metabolism, but it also allows people to lose weight in a controlled fashion. The tricky part is you can't use it long term. So most guidelines say you can use it for 12 weeks and then you have to stop. And then you have to either try something else, continue with your lifestyle modifications, and revisit your doctor. The problem with the phentermine is that it's similar to amphetamines, which means it does have side effects on your heart rate, on your kidneys, on your liver, on other organs inside the body, just like methamphetamines would. So these can become addictive, and they can also cause people to develop anxiety, it can cause other mania, and it can cause tachycardia, or irregular heartbeats. So people who are using phentermine need to have an EKG, they need to have some basic blood work before they start it, because if they do develop a complication, your doctor needs to know what to do to correct it. Okay? Now the next one is called Topamax. The brand name for Topamax is Trokendi. Now this is kind of an interesting medication. So just like we talked about before, Contrave is an antidepressant combined with opioid antagonist. Topamax is an anticonvulsant. That means it's actually a medication used for seizures. It's also used for migraine headaches. However, people who've taken Topamax actually find it to be very effective for binge eating disorders. So if you think about different types of binge eating disorders, there are things like bulimia, where people eat a large amount of food in one sitting, and then they go and vomit, and then they repeat that cycle frequently. 